Hey dancers, welcome back to our channel. I'm Julie and I'm the owner and one of the ballet instructors here at Roche Ballet, a ballet school for adults in Denver, Colorado. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about developing coordination and control both at the bar and in the center, especially with really quick little movements. This is a question um, that I get on Instagram and I would love to answer it here on YouTube. Before we get started, please make sure you do like, subscribe, share our videos, all that good stuff. It really does help us out. So let's get started. First off, I want to talk a little bit about what I even mean by control and coordination. As an example, we're going to take a petite bat ma combination today. A really quick little frappe with a petite bat ma. These are um, areas where you can really work on control of your body and coordination of your arm, head, and leg movements all at the same time. So control and coordination means that if you were to draw a box from your shoulders to your hips, that this box would stay really tight and square and controlled while the limbs are moving and doing whatever they should be doing with music. And then coordination applies to those limbs and what they're doing and how they're doing it together and at the same time and with the music and gracefully and all that. So basically our goal here is to hold everything in this box super tight and still while the legs, arms, and head move on their own together in a coordinated fashion. So both of these things are definitely skills like everything else in ballet. Just because it looks easy like all things doesn't mean that it is actually easy. I personally have never seen someone walk into the studio having never done any kind of movement before and just pick up control and coordination. Um, of course, if you've done other sports as a child, like such as ice skating, gymnastics, horseback riding, you might have a little bit more body awareness. But in general, if you uh, haven't done that, or even if you have done that, there's no saying that you should just have these skills walking off the street. So don't worry if you feel like a hot mess and everything is just flopping around and you have no idea what's going on and you don't feel graceful at all. That's totally normal. So. To get started working on this, we want to think about everything you do at the bar, focusing on the squareness and the control in this region here of your body. It's really important when you're working on control that you feel a couple of things. We've talked a lot about the level pelvis in various videos that I've done, but it's worth mentioning again because it is really critical to have your pelvis in the right spot. Where your center of gravity is, is going to be down here in this basin. And so you really want to make sure that that is solid so that you are on your balance and you're not worried about falling over. If you're worried about falling over, then the control of this little box is going to go away. So you're really working on pulling this region of your body really close to your back, to the back of your spine. Really try to cinch this in down here, low in the, in the waistband area. So really pull that in, pull that belly button tight. All of this in the lower part of the body is going to be pulled in. We're not going to let it hang out and let the pelvis tip. You're going to look at the front of your hips in the mirror to double check. Don't look at the back because we have a curve in the booty. Don't worry about that curve. It's more the front here that we want to be flat. If you've got a little bit of a tummy going on, don't worry. You can still look at the line of your shirt along the side of your hips to see if it's level. So don't worry about if you've got some stuff going on around your hips. You can still look at visual clues. If you're picturing wearing a tutu, that line of your shirt around your hips, or if you have a skirt on, that line is going to be level and not tipping back and forth. So first of all, that's where we get the bottom part of this controlled. You're really working on keeping that pelvic basin really vertical and still. Don't let it wiggle around. Next, we're going to talk about the top half of this. So you're going to feel your ribs coming in and down, not flaring open. So really make sure you close those ribs so that we're not sticking the chest out. Really making sure that this feeling of these four points, rib, rib, hip, hip, is cinching in towards the middle. That's going to give you control of this middle portion. You're going to feel like this is a little girdle that you're wearing all the time. It is going to want to go every second of the way. The problem is that gravity is really good at its job. It is really good at holding us down. And so it's going to try to pull this down at every second of the way. So literally while you're learning this, every two seconds, think stomach stomach, stomach. I'm not exaggerating. It's going to want to fall every second because gravity is always pulling. And so you have to always be pulling in opposition, pull that stomach up, pull those ribs in and together and really cinch that waist in constantly. I cannot emphasize that enough. Constantly feeling that tight, tight, tight. Then 
let's get into the shoulders. So while this is going on, it is absolutely critical that we don't squeeze the shoulders to make this happen. It, what happens if we do that and we tense the upper body is that now when we try to move our arms and coordinate it, the arms are stuck to the upper body and any movement of the arm is gonna take your body with you. So we need to detach the shoulder joint so that this is loose. This can stay tight, but the shoulders and chest have to be open and loose so that your arms can move freely. If this is tight, again, if we're bearing down on the upper body, then we can't move the arms freely, which we really need to be able to move quickly and coordinate everything. So let's review what we've got for control. We're really pulling the pelvis level and tight. We're checking the line of the shirt. We're checking whatever horizontal line you might have in your clothes to check and make sure that the bottom half uh, of your pelvis here is really nice and level. You're gonna pull your ribs in, make sure they're not flaring open in that tummy. You're gonna think about this stomach position constantly every step of the way then we're going to open the chest we're going to think about rotating the chest open so that the shoulders can stay light and free and not bear down with the shoulders and really clench the chest muscles we don't want to do that so that's our base that we're going to work from and then we're going to talk about how to move everything around that really quickly and then we're going to talk about how to coordinate all of that so now that we've got this really great base, we've got a really tight tummy, really tight corset, and a nice gorgeous open chest, we're gonna talk about moving really quickly. We're gonna start with the legs. We don't usually have to move the arms too quickly. So when we talk about moving quickly, we're gonna work on a little petite bot ma and see if we can get those legs to fly. So we're gonna start tendu, and then we're gonna lift the leg up to a low degage. I would definitely recommend starting this on flat. We're gonna get there um, for, through practice to be able to do this up on Relevé, but while we're working on controlling everything, I would definitely practice this on flat. It will translate to Relevé, don't worry. So we're gonna lift that leg up to a low dégagé, and then we're gonna start nice and slow. We're gonna go coupe front, coupe back, coupe front, coupe back, back and forth. So a couple of things that we're working on here. One really big concept in ballet is that you have to really have the detailed and specific muscle control to hold all of this tight while the leg is free and loose. So what happens is when we think about, when we start thinking about control, what we tend to do is just tense everything because the body likes to just do it all in one piece. Your brain needs to develop the skill to be able to tighten some things and loosen other things. So what we need to do is we need to tighten everything in the tummy, tighten that standing leg, tighten the turnout muscles so you're feeling the backs of your legs going closer together, almost like you're squeezing those glutes but not quite clenching them, really feeling all that tight. And then in this example, in this petite bat ma, the knee joint is totally loose. The knee joint is totally floppy, so all I'm doing is bending that leg and the thigh is not moving to do the petite bat ma. So if this were an example of it, I like to think about it as those people who can do that super cool robot thing with their arm where the tricep is really still and the hand is just kind of dangling there. So you can really hold some muscles tight and let other muscles dangle. So we're gonna feel that here. All of this is tight. Remember I said you have to check it every second of the way because it's gonna to wanna to go every time you look away from it mentally. So holding this tight, 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 go super slow releasing the knee joint. Let your quad and your hamstring do the work of moving your leg. Even if you need to let that foot flop for a little bit while you feel the loosening of the knee joint, that's totally fine. We can work towards getting that foot pointed again. Sometimes it can help to loosen that foot because what happens is we've got everything tight, everything tight, open chest, tight glutes, and then we've got a loose knee and then a tight foot. And that can sometimes confuse the brain. So while you're working on developing the skill of control and coordinating the loosening of the other muscles, it can help while you're just trying to figure this out to let everything from the knee down go floppy so your brain can just think about flopping the lower leg instead of worrying about pointing the toe and just flopping the knee. So that's a way to practice. Definitely don't go into class and start flopping that foot around. But while you're at home giving this, a, giving this a try and trying to wrap your brain around it, that can be a way if you're having trouble isolating the knee joint. So as we work on this technique, we're working on super slow, getting that knee really loose and not letting it tense up. Because when I let it tense up, then my whole body is going to start doing this crazy stuff. Usually when we tense the knee is when we start getting this uh, rond de jambe kind of a petite batma which is really hard to control because that's gonna move your pelvis all around with it. 
So in order to keep your pelvis still, you have to keep, you have to keep that, that the relationship with your hips the same and let the knee go floppy. So with all this with the petite bot ma, you're gonna work on it super slow and metered. You're gonna go one, two, three, like that speed. Or if you even need it slower to feel it, go as slow as you need. It will start to translate, but you have to get the mechanics of it first before you can start trying to go quickly. Slowly but surely, you're gonna work off the tempo. So start going a little quicker, and if you feel it start to break down, go a little bit slower back to where you can keep it perfect checking that everything is perfectly controlled while that leg is flapping around. It's always critical if you're trying to move fast that something has to be either smaller or something has to be able to move. We can't keep everything tight while we're trying to move quickly. It's just not gonna work. We have to have something able to move with, those mus with the body. So in this case, that knee joint has to be ready to move. We can't hold the knee still while we're trying to move it. It has to be able to move while everything is tight. So that's how we're gonna really keep everything controlled while moving that leg really quickly. This is gonna be the same in your petite allegro. This is gonna be the same in anything where you're gonna move really quickly. You're gonna feel this really, really, really tight. You're gonna feel this as your base for everything. This is where you're gonna really move from. And then your legs or your arms or whatever you're trying to move quickly are gonna be freed up. So for example, if you're trying to do a really quick glissade, the backs of your legs are gonna be really tight and together, but as we jump, we have to let the fronts of the legs let us go. We can't hold everything super tight and still. We can't bear down on the upper body. We can't, really, we can't really drive and squeeze in those glutes. We have to let something move. We have to keep the base, the core, the rotators engaged. We have to keep, but then we have to keep the shoulders light and we have to keep the body actually able to move. So as you start to develop this skill, even in the context of the petite bat ma, your brain will know that it's a thing that can be done in your body and will start to be able to translate it to other kinds of movements such as petite allegro where it's a little bit more esoteric and a little bit harder to practice in such an isolated context. So that's why we work on stuff like petite bat ma at the bar so we can work on that ability, that general ability to isolate the movement in your body so that we can start to apply it to other parts of, of your ballet work and your ballet technique. Last thing we're gonna talk about here is how to coordinate all of this going together. So a really common thing that we'll see is a petit bat ma with an arm movement. For example, we might go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, you've probably seen that before in class where that arm is gonna come up and around, you're gonna be following it with your eyes, it's gonna be gorgeous and graceful while your leg is doing all this crazy stuff. So I would recommend waiting to start on this until you are a little bit more comfortable with the petite bat ma and that movement because what's going to immediately start happening is we're going to lose that petite bat ma technique as soon as our brain drifts into our arm. So get really good at that core stability, get really good at that loose knee, get really good at all of that and then start coordinating the arm. So when you're there, make sure you go back all the way to the first thing I said in this video which was that you can't clench your upper body. You have to let that arm move. It has to be able to go. You can't clench that shoulder. It can't be a part of your body's mechanism to holding you tight and controlled. So how we get started with this coordination. Again, coordination is absolutely a skill that you have to develop like everything else in ballet. It is not something that comes naturally. I personally am not very coordinated in other aspects. I am not very coordinated when it comes to playing video games. I'm not very coordinated when it comes to catching balls but I'm very coordinated in the very specific context of ballet. So I have to learn the coordination and I had to work really hard to learn this coordination. It is just, it is just a skill that you learn just like everything else. So how we get started, let's use that example that we just did where in a petite bat ma, the arm would go down, up and open. So what you wanna start doing is using the music as kind of anchor points for you to aim for specific parts with your arms. So. What I usually like to recommend in the beginning while you're learning this coordination is to make it a little bit choppy. I know this sounds a little bit counterintuitive, but I like to recommend that we go specifically aiming for parts of the uh, parts of the port bra with the music so that we go one, two, three, four. Yeah, so that we really stop the arm and give the brain those checkpoints to stop and think about where we wanna to aim to. And then as we get more comfortable with those checkpoints, we can meter how long it take us to go there, and then it can become smoother. But what tends to happen is if we just start trying to circle the arm first without the rigid difference in tempo, it'll just kind of mirror what the leg is doing. So we'll get this kind of 
crazy choppy thing that the arm is trying to mirror the leg. So I like to go ahead and recommend that you make a very marked difference between what the leg is doing and what the arm is doing. So the leg is doing petit batma kind of on its own tempo and the arm is going down, stop, first, stop, up, stop, open, stop, yeah? Then you can practice those head movements, really stopping to look at the hand. And then as you get comfortable with that, try very slowly, slow the leg down, try very slowly to move the arm fluidly all the way around. And then once you get comfortable with that, moving the leg slower and moving the arm fluidly, then you can try and pick up the pace of the leg and see if you can keep the arm nice and gentle and smooth. So maybe try once slow and then put the leg on autopilot and then go for it a little quicker. So let's go, if we were to go slow with the arm, we would be able to really kind of meter that out and then we might go quicker with the leg. Get the leg started, put the leg on autopilot and then think about only the arm, try to keep the leg on that sort of autopilot, press the button, let it go on its own and finish. So to summarize how we're going to start learning that coordination, start really with the leg, start coordinating, and this is a type of coordination, coordinate the tightness of some muscles and the looseness of others. So start coordinating that. That is a big, big part of coordination and control. Then you're going to start by uh, very deliberately finding the positions with the arm that you're trying to match and meld with the feet. Then move the feet a little slowly and try to smooth out the arm movement and then try to get the leg to go a little quicker, put the leg on autopilot and smooth out the arm movement. today. I hope this helped you learn a little bit about control and coordination, both at the bar and in the center. I hope this really helps you start to improve your ballet technique and start to look really graceful while you're doing really fast and fancy footwork. Until next time, dancers, don't forget to like, subscribe, share. Let us know if you have any questions in the comments below. Take care.